Hello, Monsters Abound here, and welcome to Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires. And a brand new campaign with the free LC for the upcoming three DLCs. Epidemus. Epidemius, sorry. Got the name wrong. Doesn't matter. Anyway, um, so Epidemius, he, he likes counting stuff, basically. He's got all the character development of the Count von Sesame Street. That's it, basically. He's basically the Count from Sesame Street, but slightly more gooey, less well-dressed. That's that's pretty much him. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. And we've also got pliers here, because we've got Epidemus and pliers. There's, there's only a few people that are going to get that reference, and that's fine. I, I totally understand that, um, but it amuses me, so that's good. Now, Epidemus, uh, he does have the new plague mechanics. We've also had a bit of a revamp of the way that the uh, Nurgle factions work, which definitely seems slightly better, um, but there are still some issues. But that's, you know, that's fine. Epidemus's basic mechanic is his tally of pestilence. So basically, the more plagues you've got going on, uh, the more stuff you get. You get some bonuses there if you have uh, more more plagues going on, which is, you know, fine, good. And his trait is the Curator of Pestilence, so he gets a Talion Blade, so he can summon in a unit of Exalted Plague Bearers, which is quite nice. Regeneration when fighting against an enemy with a plague. Uh, more melee attack when fighting against an enemy with a plague. And we've also got the uh, Plague Pangendrum? 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 <laughs> Whatever. Uh, we gain powerful rewards based on number of plagues, as we've seen. Cycle time, minus one for plague flesh poppies. That's the plague bearer building. Uh, recruit rank plus two for plague bearers of Nurgle and exalted plague bearers of units. And more campaign movement range for plague cultists. So basically, you are into plagues and plague bearers. Fairly basic. Now, um, you do start off with two settlements, which is useful. Because there's two reasons. One... All of your mechanics are based on plagues. You won't get plagues until you have earned 200 infections. Currently, we have five infections a turn. That's going to take a while. Secondly, you start off sandwiched between a Zinch faction, which is quite nasty to deal with. In fact, your starting army is genuinely really quite nasty. I mean, they start off with eight guys. You start off with ten. Um... But they've they've got some. I mean, Zinch Zinch is quite nasty anyway to deal with, and then you've got a quite large army to deal with. Like this is not a walkover. This is a this is a potentially tricky battle. And if you're not paying attention, then some of your demons will get sad and die, and you can't replace them. And you are also right next to Malice. Feared by all. Yeah, because Malice is an absolute nightmare to deal with early on. So. Epidemus genuinely has, I think, one of the tougher starts in the entire game because his mechanic is kind of locked behind something that you need to really kind of boost up really quickly. You've also got one of the nastiest characters in the game sat next to you because, of course, Malus is... Uh, he basically has two health bars. He's an absolute nightmare to deal with anyway. And uh, he could become an unbreakable, slowly dying demon-type creature. But at the same time, like you've got no way, no, you've got no real way of taking him down. So that is that is rough. It is rough. I'm not gonna lie. It is a is a rough start. Uh, the Nurgle buildings have changed slightly. You now have a money building, which just gives you money. Uh, it also gives you more money if you have uh, more growth. So obviously, uh, you kind of want to boost your growth. Uh, so you've got you've got your sort of like your basic what you may call it thingy thingy magic buildings. But the trade good buildings, that's it, there we go. Um, so the trade good buildings now actually do something other than just giving you some infections and I can't remember what it used to do, but they now do different things, which is nice. You've got your recruitment buildings, they now actually give you slightly more uh, units per per cycle, which is a nice change, um, but still, it still takes quite a long time. So you're still going to be 3-3, three, 3-3-3, three, 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 and that's only because you've got the bonus. So normally it's four turns between... Um, cycles there so you know by the time you've built that if you're like 10 turns down the down the road you're only going to have an additional two plague bearers and a nurgling uh, to use which is not, a, it's not it's not very much you can you can get screwed over particularly because of course demons get sad and disintegrate so that's just something to be aware of um, so you've got three basic military buildings which give you uh, demon infantry mortal infantry and then sort of 
other, I guess. And then you've got the two advanced military buildings, which give you uh, sort of advanced units such as, well, for some reason, the Marauder Horsemen. Don't even know why they're an advanced unit. Uh, but you also get the, the Pox Riders of Nurgle and also the Plague Drones of Nurgle. I don't know why you'd want the Marauder Horsemen when you can get Plague Drones, but you know what? Fine, whatever, doesn't matter. And then, of course, you've got uh, the the one that gives you the, uh, the sort of the single entities. So things like the Beast of Nurgle and uh, the Great Unclean one as well. You do actually like get now two Great Unclean ones in one node. Um, I would personally like to see this a little bit more because each of these nodes takes six turns. You can increase this through tech. And I think there's a commandment you can use. But overall... That is still going to take a long fucking time. Like, counting all of this, I think it's around 42, 48 turns to go all the way around. Which is effectively a third of a campaign. So even if you build it right at the start, you're roughly going to go around that cycle naturally three times. That's pretty, pretty bad. Um, but... Fine, we'll see how that goes. Now, you can actually now rush the cycle. Uh, once you've constructed it, you can rush it with infections. So infections are quite important. And uh, we do, in fact, have a building that we're going to be building a lot of, which is the uh, Fungi of Defiament, which gives us 10, uh, 15, and then finally 25 infections per turn. Also gives us control, which I don't really care about. I'm not really bothered about that. What I care about is the infections. We need to be building this in every single settlement to give us as many infections as possible. Um, it does mean that you kind of start off with very low infection gain. Defeating armies does not give a lot of infections. Um, so you do kind of need to just build that everywhere. That is one of the most important buildings you can get. Uh, particularly for Epidemus, I think. Uh, you've also got the money building there, and you've got the Weeping Creepers, which gives you more growth, which is obviously quite important because more growth gives you more money. And then you've got a Carnivorous Compass, which is going to give you more uh, recruitment health and recruitment cost reduction, which is fine, uh, but it's probably going to be not an important building to build. So by the time you build it, your army is not going to be anywhere near where the building's being built, which completely negates the point for having it. But there we go. That's fine. And you've also now got an actual defensive settlement building. You've got walls, uh, which is amazing because you never used to have that. Um, I still think you get a lot of defensive units from that. Yeah, you do. Um, but you now actually can uh, build. Because I don't think you could build walls before. I mean, you, you would have them in major settlements, but you would never be able to like build them properly. So that's a nice change. Uh, that's good. And you've also got the guarded thingamajig, which allows you to recruit uh, Plagrin, which is which is fine, and this building is going to give you access to the Exalted Hero of Nurgle and also the Cultists of Nurgle, which again is fine. I kind of feel like they slapped them on there because they didn't know where else to put them, but whatever. Okay, so we're going to immediately start off with the Plague Flesh Poppies building. There we go. Build that one there. Um, we could recruit some more lads. What is the Nurgle corruption here? Because Nurgle corruption now increases the recruitment health for all uh, for all units in the province. Um, I don't think it's going to go up hugely. I don't think it's going to change much. So I think we're just going to go for it. And uh, we're going to pick up uh, we're going to pick up a beast of nerve. I think I'm going to pick up two of the plague bearers as well. Okay. The important thing is you just don't want them to die. Okay. First battle of a brand new campaign. It smells of well, sick. So for anyone wondering, this is a replay of the battle. I fight the replay. No, I fight the battle. Don't fight the replay. I fight the battle and then watch the replay so I can enjoy all the pretty sights and sounds of Total War rather than watching it from the bird's eye view, which is um, in slow motion, which is how I play most of these battles. It's just how I roll, baby. So we're fighting against Zinch. This will be a full campaign, by the way. We're going to be a full, doing a full campaign with uh, Epidermis and also with um, Tutankhamun, whatever his name is, the, uh, the warlord guy. We'll be doing him as well. So double Nurgle, that's right. And uh, the supporters are currently voting or probably have already voted on which faction they are going to watch next. So you can become a YouTube or Patreon supporter and be playing either Elspeth or Malachi, depending on what they vote for. I haven't checked the vote this morning, so it could go either way. Who knows? 50-50. Either way, the first episode of that will be coming out when I have uh, the embargo drops. And then I jack up the price. But uh, that will be a Tutankhamun. What the fuck is the other guy? I can't, genuinely can't remember his name. I just, call, I, just, I just keep calling him Tutankhamun. 
anyway, there is Epidermis. He's got a nice, he's got a nice little uh, hourglass there, and he's making notes, which is good. Summoned in his uh, exalted plague bearers, as you can see, they're getting absolutely hammered by all that missile fire, which is why this army is quite nasty to deal with early on, especially if you are not particularly well versed with how noble works. His units are slow and grindy but can be dispatched fairly quickly if focused on and of course because they're demons they will disintegrate if they get sad so you've got to try and keep your unit keep your army cohesive together don't let units str like, chase other enemy units off the map because that's a bad time if they get surrounded they're just gonna die nothing you can do about it the exalted plague bringers do have a couple of they got like three shots uh, the shots are quite powerful 40 missile damage which means they are pretty potent as you can see doing quite a lot of damage to those blue horrors blue horrors opening fire in return doing a bit of damage as well we're using the rock flies to pick off enemy units enemy missile units the rock flies are very good but we can't replace them and if they get sad they will disintegrate it's actually very hard to to lose units in total war warhammer as long as you win the battle the likelihood is i mean even if you lose the battle you probably won't actually lose that many units the problem is assuming you can you know retreat the problem is with demons that as soon as they get sad they will just disintegrate so that's worse being a demon is just worse so we have to be very very careful here make sure all of our units are supported they have the emotional support you've got the froggos there the plague toads those guys are uh, they're not very good i'll be honest with you plague toads of nurgle not 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 the goat as the kids would say not a lot of riz yeah that's all right i know the lingo i'm i'm down with it i'm cool We'll move in to finish off the last of the enemy army, just these marauders of Zinch with spears. But yeah, quite a nasty initial army to deal with. Definitely one of the harder ones. But dealt with nonetheless. Right, we are going to take the infections. Taking infections is important. Right, we get a we get nice bonus infections as well. That's good. So we need two hundred. We spent so yeah the the building so these buildings now cost infections to build. So infections are super important. Um, so we're gonna have to do as many of those as possible. We are going to move as close as we can somewhere like there is fine we are going to recruit everything we can then we are going to use the unholy manifestation we're going to pop that on him and basically that means he is going to regenerate a lot quicker so his units will be ready to go in a couple of turns but he can't move in the intervening time which is fine we are going to go with oh, i don't know if this is useful i don't a lot of these explosions aren't super great. Mm. I'm going to get Root Marcher. I'm going to get Root Marcher. And uh, Pliers is going to get... Oh, I kind of want Replenishment. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff that I want, but that's what we're going to go for to start off with. Research! Research has changed. The research tree is no longer complete garbage. Instead, it's set like a tree... Or like a a balls and a chode, which is the sign of Nurgle. Um, so we're going to start off with hmm, casualties captured post battle does mean more infection. So a pestilous life, I think. We'll go with that. So ideally, we want to try and grab the Tower of Flies because that is the uh, three part settlement of our province. So we want to get the entire province now. The Demon Prince, Ted, is hanging around, and he's moving fast to try and take these settlements. So if you dally for for a turn, yes, you're stuck between Malice on one side and the Demon Prince on the other. It is not a good position to be in. 
it is a rough start. Especially because Nurgle is a very slow start. You need your infections and you need to start stocking up units. Because at the moment, we have no units. If we fight a battle and we lose units, we cannot replace them. Well, that's not entirely true. We have two Nurglings, but that's it. Until this building is finished, in three turns, we have no additional units. Which is kind of rough. I'm going to try and... Promise I make is to seek profit from this meeting. Okay, you're all the broke. What if I what if I declare war on them and then give you some money? By all means. Lovely. All right, we'll keep because you know what? I don't want to fight Malice right now. Nope. Nope. No, sorry, Bob. Absolutely not. Now, while Ted is moving fast to secure these settlements, we can actually use that to our advantage. Because if you move in the exact way I do, and I've tested this several times, he will almost always do the same thing to start off with. I don't know if he's got like a script that makes him do the same thing, but either way, he can be useful to us. Okay, so we can now move. So we're going to move. Now, if all goes to plan, Ted should end up here at his turn. Fingers crossed. Uh, we're going to get mm, creeping corruption, maddening crowds, more control. Super useful. For Sunder T, you know what? More heals. Definitely. Mm, malice. Malice, why are you invading my personal space, Malice? Go away, Malice. We've got a non-aggression pact, and there he is. Bang on time. You could set your watch by him. Which means, if we attack the Tower of Flies, Ted will come in to help, because he's currently at war with them. Which means we can get a nice easy auto result, not that battle would have been that difficult. And, uh, I do kind of want the infections. Yeah, I'm going to loot and occupy. We're going to loot and occupy. Right, we are going to get, not hate Zinch, that's a terrible thing. Well, we are fighting Zinch, but only briefly, he's going to be dead in a second. When when can we get the... Oh, we, we can... Mm, no. 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 I'm thinking I'm getting... I'm, now. What are you doing, cat? Why are you here? Stop shaking and ringing your bell. We're going to grab the armor of Malady, I think. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get Miasma of Pestilence. Right, so we now have the entire province, which is great. We are immediately going to go. More infections per turn. Boom. We're going to repair all this. That's fine. I would like more money, but at the moment we can't actively use that money because the only buildings we can build with money are the infrastructure buildings, which we can't build, and the these ones require infections, which we don't currently have. So, so for the moment we are fine. Um, now, Ted is going to take Volcano's Heart next turn. There's not much we can do about that. He will just grab that. Uh, the Crystal Spires is there, but Ted will secure this as his like first province, I believe. Either way, we've managed to sort of deal with this problem. There we go. So he's taking the Volcano's Heart. Now, obviously, he will probably take the Tower of Flies if you dally for, for a single turn. But with that little routine, the fight in the battle, moving up, recruiting some units, using... The the th the Healy thing, whatever that is called, I can't remember. Uh, in is it an invocation? I can't remember, it doesn't matter. Anyway, and then moving up, and then next turn taking the Tower of Flies, Ted will actually be there to help you, and you'll get your entire province. No problem. We've got Fasundity as well, which is our army ability. So, so far so good. Uh, I'm going to get Ransom Visitations, because killing enemy characters is super useful. And we're going to meander this way, because I don't think that Ted is necessarily a huge problem. We can get an aggression power with him. My main concern is being sandwiched between the two of them. That, that is my problem. Now, I am tempted to say we could sail across and beat up Throg. And that might be an option. Um, again, we don't really have a lot of units available, and you see you can rush these now. So we could rush this uh, to get to the next level and get some more units. So the, the ability to rush your your cycle is really useful. I guess later on you don't need to bother because you'll probably have, you know, buildings cycling around all the time. But it does mean that if you have enough infections, you can rush and grab a whole bunch of, uh, you know, greater demons and stuff like that. Which is really useful because you just didn't... 
just couldn't do you couldn't do that. You used to just be able to you built the building, and because you had to, the the cycle was locked at a certain point depending on the settlement level. So, if for example your cycle reset itself for your greater demons and then the settlement upgraded to tier 5 so you could get great unclean ones, you would have to wait like 36 odd turns to be able to get a great unclean one, which was bonkers. Now at least you can rush it. So, I mean it's something. It's 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 better. I still think while it is a really nice thematic mechanic it is also one that they kind of jammed in there and didn't really, I think. To, oh no, what are you doing? Go away. They didn't really test it enough, in my opinion. So I'm glad that they have gone back and uh, made some changes. Although at this point, we're like, what, two years on? Two years on, and they've only just managed to get round to fixing something which. I, I genuinely feel was just not working particularly well. So glad they've done it. Glad they've got there. Yay. But could, could have done it a little bit sooner. I get wanting to maybe wait for the DLC, but I think Nurgle was the faction that really needed an update, along with the Ogres, of course, and they haven't got one yet, so... Maddening crowds. I'm hoping you will just go away because I really don't want to have to fight with us because he's a massive pain in the ass. Uh, I'm going to get rid of a Nurgling because they're not very good. Let's do that. Right, so the more the more uh, Nurgle corruption we have in our region, the, the more the recruitment health we have. So it increases by 27%. So as you can see, these boys came in at level... Uh, uh, t uh, about 57, just over half health, to be honest. And they'll replenish almost immediately. So uh, we're fine. More growth is good, because of course growth means money. And we have... I don't know how many we need. Does it say how many we need? So we've got 159 of 200. So, at this rate, we're doing, we're doing pretty well. Um, I've just... I just don't really want to tangle with Malice, because I've tried it before. In fact, I've tried it several ways, and it never goes well. Mostly because of Malice. In fact, I'll go so far as to say all because of Malice. He's basically impossible to kill and unbreakable. I don't like the way he's cozying up to me. But at least he's still fighting someone. So with any luck, he'll keep doing that. In the meantime, we're going to go over and beat up Throg. Throg, do you have any friends? No, but you are at war with the Masters of Innovation, who are the new dwarf faction, I believe. So we're going to declare war on Throg. We are going to take his settlements. And I'm going to launch and occupy. Lovely. Uh, do I want Slime Trail? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm going to get more Rancid Visitations. Also, I need more Winds of Magic. I spent my entire Albion campaign without any Winds of Magic, and it feels like I'm going to do the same here. Uh, we could upgrade... Well, that doesn't, give, that doesn't give infections per turn. Okay, we're going to upgrade this one. Let's keep that ticking along. We need the growth building, ideally. And we need to bop Throg wherever he is. Well, you say that, but... I think we've got a pretty good chance of bopping Throg. Assume I can get my hands on him. Talk of the devil. But we have unlocked our plague. So this is the new plague system. And the way it works is that you have three effects that you can select. You have your infections which you use to create the plague. So, for example, we can only start here. So we're going to take this one. So plague effects and Nurgle armies, we get more casualty replenishment rate, and enemies suffer from attrition. We can increase growth, we can get melee defense, or we can get vanguard deployment. Vanguard deployment's not going to be that useful, but melee defense could be useful, and melee attack could be attention. So we can do that. So basically what you can do is you can sort of like jump around and uh, grab each of the effects, depending where they are. They, these do randomize as well. 
so they won't be in the same place each time so you can get different uh, variations which is fine uh, my feeling on this is that it's definitely better than the previous um, effect um, the mechanic however I still don't think the effects are particularly interesting so I mean the attrition is fine it's not a lot of attrition the melee defense like it's it's nice that we get more melee defense and they get less but four is almost unnoticeable as an amount it just doesn't make any difference a melee attack the same it's it's minimal right it's minimal now you do get blessed plague effects like these ones here now that doubles the effect so effect you know that would make it more useful um but i would say that's probably only useful if it's blessed so if they're balancing it around the fact that it might be blessed I would personally say remove the blessing and then just have the all effects doubled because these effects are fairly weak and barely noticeable. The, the the bonus economy effects like growth and income, quite nice for you. I don't necessarily think I care about reducing income from AI settlements because the bonuses they get are at such a level that it's not going to affect them at all. Like it makes no difference to them. It's like going up and damaging one of their buildings. It's just not worth it. I guess if it's on the route to another one that you want, if you want to attack an enemy faction, it's actually difficult to work out what you want to do because the effects are so weak that it's not really going to have any effect. To be honest, you're probably better off saving your infections to race your cycles around and getting better units. That's my opinion. And um, Buffing your own settlement seems to make a lot of sense. Buffing your own armies is fine. Nerfing enemy armies is... I guess if you want to, and debuffing enemy settlements is basically pointless. That's, I think, the the tier system of plagues. It's what I think, anyway. Um, so I guess we'll go with this, because it's more melee attack, more melee defense, and also gives us counter and it's fine. What you can do now is you can also increase the plague modifiers, so you can increase the spread chance, uh, duration, and also immunity. So after an army or settlement has been affected by plague, they get an immunity, which means they can't be affected by plague um, during that turn. It's normally five turns, but you can reduce it if you want to. So we are going to uh, target our army. Epidema suppliers. We are going to. Well, we can't. Do... Basically, we can only do a box standard one, can't we? So we can infect. We could infect Throg, but I'm not. I think infecting us is probably a better. Well, actually, we get bonuses if we're fighting armies that are infected, aren't they? The only problem is we're going to kill them so it won't spread. Uh, difficult. I think. Mm, do we do it? Go on then. The nice thing is you can you can you can you can kill the, the maggots if you click on them. It's fun, isn't it? Um, so so far so good. We've got a little plague boy. We're going to spread the plague to Throg. This army is infected, which means it gets less melee attack and melee defense, and it will take attrition, assuming it survives, which it won't. This is going to be a tough fight because uh, we are quite out. I think we're outnumbered. Are we outnumbered? Yep, we're outnumbered. Got a real danger of uh, potentially losing units here. Once you've built up a little bit of reserve, right, it's fine. It's just risky to lose units early on because if you can't replace them, well. Oof. Oh, not javelins. Don't get me wrong. Love a javelin. Something about throwing large pointy sticks at people. Speaks to me. Speaks to my soul. Don't know what it is. But there we go. Right, their left flank is engaging, which I'm hoping... If we can, if we can deal with their left flank first, and then not have to worry too much about their right flank... Probably what I should have done is pulled these guys back a little bit, but they had the they had the upper ground, so they had the high ground, so I thought I'd leave them there. And we've got a problem with the javelins because we can't really chase after them. Plague bearers, so slow. Not even our rot flies can really chase after these marauder horsemen, but we can shoot them with death heads, which is, you know, pretty effective. In come the rot flies. As you can see, they're being uh, 
sort of harassed their speed. They've got a speed of 90. These guys have got a speed of 77-ish because they're plagued at the moment with poison. Uh, but they will be able to uh, escape. He did drop a rancid visitation on Throg, which is eating through his health. But of course, being a troll, he will regenerate quite quickly. Those rock flies, fantastic for coming and attacking the rear. That's what we've done there. So I'm hoping to break some units. Yeah, that's looking good. But we are taking a lot of that missile fire, the little javelin fire, which is not particularly welcome. But so far, so good. Most of their army is holding back, which means we can concentrate and wipe them out. I don't know why they haven't decided to commit everyone. But um, thanks, I guess. There is Cuddles, our beast of Nurgle. Just want to hug. And Throg is... He's, well, he's getting a beating. Epidermis is showing him his notes. Look at that. Is it, can, can we actually see what's written there? Hang on. Uh, is it? No. That's okay. That's N. No. Nondescript. Certainly looks very chaosy though. Got some numbers there. Very nice. Good bit of reading material. He just wants to show you his pamphlet. Throg, read the fucking pamphlet. Given up. Oh, fine, fuck it. Fuck you. Don't want to read my poetry. Pulling some of our units back, just in case, but most of their army has yet to commit. So they're focusing. Throg is. I mean, he's getting a beating. You can see, I like the fact they've... Uh, is this new? I'm fairly sure it's new. This little, you can see the um, the hit point regeneration, what they've got, healing power there. That's pretty nice. That's, you know, it's giving you more information, which is nice. Total War often is a bit stingy with the amount of information it gives you. And uh, it's nice to see them being a little bit more, you know, transparent. Managed to catch those Mordor horsemen. With any luck, we can break them, force them off the battlefield. Finishing them off will be basically impossible. Uh, they will just run away and get away. But there we go. Right, Throg is now beating it. He's running away and to be honest, we won't be able to chase him down. He will come back if given half a chance. So what we'll do is we'll use the rock flies to basically chase him off the battlefield. As long as there's a unit within range, a unit can't rally. So if we just keep chasing him, eventually he will exit off the side of the map. Uh, some Nurglings are getting sad over there, and when they get sad, they take damage. So we can see there, they're now taking 132 to 264 damage per second, which, of course, makes them sad, and then they get sad because they're taking more damage, and then they take more damage because it's a, it's a terrible... It's a terrible cycle. Basically, they need some therapy. But very rapid therapy. And no therapy is that quick. A little bit of danger here because our units are now spreading out all over the place. I need to pull them back, but at the same time, I don't want to be caught out by that. I'm trying to chase down the missile units. Getting the old plague toads who are not particularly quick, but quicker than the, the javelin boys. So we can hopefully pin them down. I mean, we'll say, we'll say for the plague toads, they're good at units um, breaking unit cohesion. Like they will just they will just send people flying all over the place. Unfortunately, one of our plague toads, I, I wasn't paying attention. They got chased over here, and uh, there's there's no saving these guys now. They're basically dead. They'll do some damage, but they're gone. That's it. That unit's dead. They'll never be able to. I, I can't get units over there quick enough to save them. They can't disengage from that. They'll just get sad and disintegrate. is why you need to keep your units nice and supported. I mean, at least Nurgle's demons are fairly resilient. So they they do need to take quite a lot of damage before they get sad. Whereas, you know, Slesh demons, not much resilience. Just immediately disintegrate at the drop of a hat. So... I mean, that's something. I'll take it. Well, we lost a couple of units. 
I don't need... Mm, I'll take the infections. That's it. Get, get out of here. Right. We are going to grab this one. Yeah, I'm just going to double check. We get regenerate. Did we get regeneration? Genuinely can't remember. We were. Is it because when we have a plague or when they have a plague? Uh, fight against an enemy with a plague. Okay. Well, I genuinely wasn't paying attention, so maybe, maybe not. Five, six, can we do that without dying? We can. I will take that. I will also take the replenishments. It really is. We got some stuff as well. This is great. When is this? Three, seven turns. Oh, damn it. Oh, it's so useful. Uh, also, you know, generating Nurgle Plague. Also quite useful. We are replenishing. Yeah, okay. That's fine. We probably want to go with more replenishment, though. And I'm also going to grab Children of Nurgle. What does that do? Kill per second. I mean, I'm not against that. I'm on board. I'm on board. Get the armor of malady to buff up our plague bearers a little bit more. And we just have to hope that uh, malice leaves us alone. Raise. Okay, so we've got we've got a bunch more infections. That's nice. Which means we can. Blo nope. Blow a plague. Right, okay, so we are going to... Oh shit, he's locked down for two turns. Fuck. If we kill 3,000 guys, we get the Purveyor of Mortality. Broken Wheel are dead. We've got more growth. What I'm probably going to do... Oh, we've got Cult Manifests in... Oh, yes. In Kook. <laughs> Fucking... Uh, not that one. Lord is present in the region, so that would give us some income. I don't really massively care about the income. I, get, I mean, is Kugath's home? Yeah, sure. The only place you'll find cults springing up is place where Nurgle already is, which is kind of the opposite of what it should do, in my opinion. Realistically, plague like cults should pop up in in nondescript places, and then should you should be able to build on that. But they only pop up in in Nurgle places. So the only place you will ever find a cult popping up is usually a territory already owned by Nurgle. And I'm guessing there would be a cult, but I'm I think it's supposed to be underground cults, right? That's what the description suggests. It's supposed to be an underground cult operating in that settlement. Rather than, I mean, there's no point being under, there's no point being an underground fucking organization. There's no point being a cult of Nurgle trying to hide yourself in a fucking Nurgle settlement. No one gives a shit. It's not really going to be a problem, is it? Uh, so I think, I think these randomize. So I guess maybe I picked all the, I mean, maybe we just got the first one. Number of plagues or new blessed symptoms and symptoms locations too. Yeah, okay. Okay, well that's fine. Right, um, in the meantime... Do we want to go this way? We want to go this way. We can probably reach the Ultra Spawn. Wait, is that Ultra Spawns? Ultra Spawns is one of the settlements we want. Yes, good, okay. We're just going to go and beat up uh, Throg. It does mean we're a little bit further away from, from our normal province. I just have to hope that Malice has someone else audience. to beat up. He does not have anyone else to beat up. That is a potential problem, but he doesn't like the people next door, so hopefully he hates them more than he hates me. Get some more friends. Go and take the altar of spawns. Bob's your uncle. Of course. All right, that's fine. We'll just have to take him off. He is tired as well. He's pooped. He is pooped. Yes, yeah, so those are all starting plays. So if we go this one, more growth, and... Oh, just really... Nurgle Corruption is fine. 
Sure. So this will increase Nugget Corruption, it'll reduce growth, and it'll cause attrition to factions in the Imagig. Um, how many more? Are we do we could actually increase that. So we could increase it by like a couple of turns. We're going to target the well we could target ourselves. Tell you what, if we make that one turn and increase the 35% spread, and then we infect. We infect Epidemus. So we do that, and hopefully that will spread. But we are going to go and bop this guy. It says close victory. Also has a settlement garrison. That's fine, but it's going to have to wait until next time. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.